Namaste everyone. Very warm welcome to Satsang this morning. Sadhguru Sri Muji Ji Ki Jai. Where should we go to find the self? Maybe we sent a message or someone sent a message yesterday. I'm tired. I'm tired of all the words. So many have said. Tired of concepts. Why are we tired of concepts? Because they are not getting us anywhere. And any concept we want to hold on to any idea that we feel like is the ultimate truth as an idea, then gets smashed by life. And life says, no, even this, we cannot hold on. So it's very good if you're tired. It's the best news if you're tired of concepts. It's the best news. Because if you're not tired of concepts, then I get a bit tired actually. <laughs> So for me, it is the greatest news when someone says, I'm really done with notions. Notions about yourself. You need a notion to exist. Your notionless existence, does it have any trouble right now? is as simple as that. So what you hear in satsang are just those notions to rid you of your pre-existing conditions. Empty as a baby. What is not here? The world continues to play Perception is happening. You exist and you are aware of this existence. That simplicity. The self is here. It is aware of its own dynamic aspect called existence. Where is the invented you? Now, Let's take some simple examples. Right now, all perceiving is happening, looking is happening, hearing is happening. Now, is there a you who is deciding to see, deciding to hear, and only then the switch of hearing comes on? It's happening. It is able to distinguish between the pauses and the words. It is able to distinguish between the various colors in this phenomenal creation. It is able to distinguish between the sensations and the emotions that you might be experiencing. Now, it is doing all of that. Where are you? What are you doing? Is there a you which is apart from this? The 
don't pick up any notion. Don't pick up a concept. Because in that picking up of the concept, you will give birth to this individualized you. Not real birth also. Imagine birth to the facade of you. If that one comes and goes, if identity comes and goes, you say don't pick up the identity, Guruji says don't identify. That means the identity itself must be a coming and going. Who is it coming and going for? Is that one coming and going? So I was saying that this is like the Shakespearean play, Much Ado About Nothing. There are two ways to look at that. One is that all of this, the trying, trying, getting there, not getting it, getting it, is much ado about nothing because you are it. You cannot get it or not get it. In that way, it is much ado about nothing. But actually, satsang is also much ado about no thing. All we speak about is that which is not a thing, the self which is not phenomenal prior to all phenomena. Let's make much ado about that. You are all allowed to make much ado about that which is not a thing. And don't make any ado about something which is a thing. Deal? What will you report from there? This, very often I do this now, just to show you what is happening. So there's a sense of I am, I exist. You have, can you say that you have an experience unless you exist? So first there must be this existence. Then all experiences, everything that you perceive is after that. First existence, then ah, there's a body, there's this energy construct called mind, thoughts, there's this world, there are people, there are relationships, there are all kinds of things, all phenomena. None of this is experience unless you exist. So this existence, who is aware of that? I am aware of even this, but this I is prior to even existence. Why do we say it is prior to existence? Because ultimately, even existence is a coming and going for I. Papaji used to ask, what woke up? You say I woke up at 7 a.m. What woke up? Who would be that which witnesses even this? That which is prior or untouched, unmoved with the coming and going of even existence. So now, we made much ado about that which is after existence, all phenomena, thoughts, experiences, even spiritual experiences, leave some of that, leave all of that for some time. And let's see, what is that? Which is not a thing, which is prior to even existence. We have not made any ado about this. And yet we have looked for constancy, permanency in something which is coming into 
all experiences they come and go because i am at sir comes and goes so now we look for constancy in the wrong places find that which is the one constant that which is aware of even your presence can you take this little you along can you take the idea of you along as you cross this holy door of i am nothing from this realm can do can cross this door you cannot carry this one along so as you that we consider ourselves to be can never get it that which is not even a phenomenal appearance that which is not even a phenomenal appearance which is just a figment of our imagination not even a clear if i ask you who is the you do you have even a clear imagination of it not even like the pink elephant which has no <laughs> credence <laughs> but at least you can get some qualities and attributes of this clear view it's been it's got a drum it's got all the things that an elephant has but you that you which you might be considering yourself to be that is not to be found you say okay the pink elephant is a body so i am a body now if you are a body what are you doing here if you are just a body what are you doing here if you are the body mind what are you doing here there is nothing here for the body or for the mind so somewhere it is already seen that you are beyond this i was saying the other day joking aap joking that if the body actually had a independent sense of volition of choice then between hearing these words which are meaningless to the body and eating chocolate ice cream why would the body go choose to come to such a so you are not that you are not the mind which is just coming and going of these thoughts what is that which means untouched the movement of the body coming and going of the thoughts is there nothing are you also coming and going if there is no sensory perception of the body no sensation of the body do you not exist if you were to close your eyes so the visual perception is gone and for some time suppose you lost your memory do you know which body is here even to remember which body is here you need the memory but you still exist many times this experience happens that you wake up in the morning you say ha ah, this body is here. but that which is coming to this recognition is perceiving even this body who is that one 
that is aware of the sensation that we call the body. Every minute, this body is changing. The baby body that was born, there is not a single cell in common with that one and this one that is here. Famous uh, super thesis example. There's a ship, you know this must be. There's a ship. One by one, every year, one part of the ship is changed, replaced with a new one. And after a few years, every part is different. What makes it continue to be the same ship? Memory. And what is the memory? The name, the identity. And there's a part two to this famous example, which is you change one part, and with these parts, actually you're making a new ship. So you're exchanging one part of the old one, and then you're using that old part for the new one. So which one is the ship of Theseus? This body is constantly changing and this much is clear that nothing about that baby body is here. What is it that continues to make it me? I was born. I am here now. This is my story. Most of that body which was there 10 years ago is not here. All the cells are fresh. So what is it that makes this you? Who is the owner of this? All the functioning of the body. Are you doing it? Are you pumping your blood? Are you making sight happen? Hearing happen? Touch happen? You say, I move my hands. Do you know how to fire a neuron? <laughs> it is just happening. And yet, I say, you're not doing your hearing. And yet, if I say, you're not hearing actually, somebody else is hearing for you. Is that true? You're hearing these words, and yet you're not doing the hearing. Which is that you that is hearing these words? What are all the senses reporting to? Is there a person sitting over there? Or is the person, the so-called person, just this judging interpretive voice? Who lives here in your heart? 
Is there an entity? Not the physical harm. So all sensory perception and so-called inner perception is going on naturally. Your existence is happening naturally. And there is a simple awareness of even this existence. Now what else you want? That idea of one is the invention of the untruth. That what is, is not enough. Is the invention of, invention of lying. <laughs> like I have the seven course meal laid out for you on the table. But I want some scraps on the floor. Compared to your holy presence, <laughs> compared to your holy presence, the divine being that is here, all that you could want is just like that. God is waiting for you and you're still playing with the dollhouse of identity. Yeah. That's why we say, don't exchange this holy presence, your being, for a mere thought. Don't exchange what is with a notion about yourself. This is the habit, this is the addiction. So satsang is rehab for that addiction. Now the addict sometimes complains that at least let me have that concept of about myself. At least this must be true. Or the addict the addict's mind is a devious mind which wants to use even the words of satsang for its own addiction. So in the rehab you're getting medicine to cure yourself from your addiction of smoking. And then you wonder if I can smoke that. How that will be if I smoke this medicine <laughs> for smoking. So many are smoking the Advaita concepts of satsang instead of digesting the medicine. So this. Simplicity of what you are before you pick up a notion about yourself. This is all that I'm pointing to actually. That's why I'm pausing everybody's questions for a minute today. Before you pick up the question, what is it that you are? Is there somebody sitting there who has got it? Is there somebody without the notion? Somebody sitting there who has not got it? All of these are just notions, just ideas.
why it is too simple for the mind to fathom. I was reading about the sage once. And the sage used to say, any question, any question, ask me, don't feel shy, don't hesitate, I'm here for this. <laughs> and the questioner would come with a question, say, what? That's your question? You stupid idiot. <laughs> you haven't heard anything I've said. <laughs> Prior to anything that we might feel is blocking us, any idea of somewhere to go, what is here? How long do you want to play on the merry-go-round? How many times did you buy tickets to this merry-go-round? Guruji tells this beautiful story. When uh, Lord Ram, he was getting married. So his father, uh, Dashrath, said to his younger son, Lakshman, Lakshman, go and invite all the sages. We want all the sages to come and bless the ceremony. So Lakshman goes on his horse. One by one, inviting all the sages. Then he reaches the ashram of the great sage Vashisht. By the time he got to Vashisht's ashram, he felt like, I have so many other sages to go to, so I better quickly just invite him. So he stays on his horse and he tells the sage, Sage Vashisht, my father, the great king Dashrat, invites you to my brother's wedding. And Vashir says, what is this about? I don't know any Dashrat, Ram, who are you? And Lakshman is starting to get angry. Lakshman nature in the scripture is as it is. Somebody is very volatile. <laughs> so Lakshman says, what do you mean? I'm the king's son. This is my story, in a way. Let me go into that heart. And uh, the king had given Lachman this ring. Say, if the sage doesn't recognize you, here's my ring. Would you show him this ring and he'll know that you're actually my son. So Lachman is trying to show the sage this ring. Sage is not listening. He's saying, go, go into that hut over there and just come over there and I will spend some time with you when you come. So that one hesitatingly gets down from his horse and gets into this hut. What he sees is a vase with so many of that same ring, the king's ring, unique in the kingdom. He breaks down. 
What's happening here? I don't understand this. This is my father's dream. How oh, you have so many of these? There are hundreds of these here. And he says, Vashisht comes. He says, how many times, Ratma, will we go through this same thing? When will you get off your high horse of the ego? And when will we meet as one? Empty of identity. What was the ring? It's the identity. I am the king's son. I am this. I am something. And how long? How many times will we have the same? Will be conversation. Lifetime after lifetime we meet. And the alarm clock keeps ringing, wake up. Wake up. This is it. It's now. Wake up. You say, I want to play some more because I found the next holy concept. Become empty of this notion of yourself. That which you consider yourself to be is never special. In fact, it is just this what you consider yourself to be. It seems to block out your magnificence. Remain empty of any notion of yourself. Don't exchange God for a mere thought. Then tell me if there is a you, there is God. Then pick up the idea of your godliness, taste it. There is nothing to do, nowhere to go. The other day I was saying that it is as if it is the grape pretending to be the orange. What will you tell this grape? Saying, 
I think I'm an ornament. When these thoughts go, then I will see that I am the creator. Is that okay? These orient thoughts go. Only then will I see I am the creator. When orangey feelings go, the feelings are very orangey. <laughs> so I must be an orange. Did you buy all this? Okay, okay don't worry about the thoughts and the feelings for some time. Just see what you really are. Is there an orange here? You don't even need to find the grave. Just see that the orange is not here. You see, so our, our truth is easier than this grape and orange example. If you see that the false is not here, the truth is so apparent. That is why this hypnosis is also a very, very beautiful aspect of Maya. You see the divine theory. How consciousness itself can consider to be a limited entity. How do you do it? How do you do it? Can you do it in your notionless state? Because in your notionless state, you are an associated being, as Guruji would say. Pure consciousness. You can never become impure, but you can believe that you are. Now, whatever the mind will say will be a but. <laughs> How do I know this? <laughs> and that but will be an uninquired inference. Because if you look through the but, 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 whatever it is, you will see that there is no I on the basis of which that thought is being believed. I am still not getting it, but I want that. I want that. Why I say it's an uninquired difference? Because if you were to inquire into it, you will see that there is no such I who wants anything at all. So our doubts are just this uninquired judgments. I've said often that for those who have been in satsang with me for some time, forget about the but and also forget about the and. Many times it's so simple, so clear, but the mind still wants to participate in this and it knows that. The buts have been seen through, so then it wants to add some and. There is no and after God. There is no and after the self. So 
So the notional quality might change from that outer to the appender to amplifiers. Even that is not needed. We are going to be, be, be rid of belief in this notional one. Be rid of the spiritual knowledge which it has on offer. Then when we play this game, one of my favorite games in satsang is I am awareness, but or I am the self, but or I am the self and I am awareness and both the but and the I are meaningless. That is the job of satsang. Those notions which are used here in satsang must play the role of removing these embedded notions. The thorn which removes the thorns and then must be thrown away. So we all notions. Now, question? Still there? Any question? Look at that. Everything is tasted in satsang. Everything is tasted in satsang. But? Is it dynamic? I'm not using but. Okay. <laughs> Are you feeling but? Not feeling but. Okay. But you're, you're looking like you're feeling but. Feeling <laughs> but. 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 Is it? <laughs> but. Everything is tasted. But you're not looking like the one who's tasting everything. You're looking like the but is more important. As you say, it's all tasty. Satsang is space, space, experience, dynamic living. Again, I do say the scraps. The dynamic living, the scraps are attractive. Scraps are attractive. So, because what changes? Is a habit. This is the habit. How will you break the habit? <laughs> give it to me. It means you must give it to me. If you give it to me, then you must give it to me. So how uh, how I'm not giving it? <laughs> By taking it back again. Not <laughs> believing Giving it to me means that you have no relationship with it anymore. 
it is it is our mind to deal with yes yes surrendering means you are saying father i am only interested in you now everything else is your problem yes why am i family yes yes Now don't make that a bad for your ego to hold on to. No, because the one that is claiming that I am coming is not the same one who says your grace is running my life. See, so then. Giving it to you might sound like a very trivial statement, but I don't take it trivially. Give it to me means you have no interest in it anymore. It's mine to deal with. And any time you say no, no, this I want this way, I want to do it this way, then you are picking it back up. Are you not happy with God's buffet? That you say I want. You want beautiful things, but uh, but uh, no, but that's the yes. <laughs> most beautiful thing. Yes, it's, it's, this is God's buffet. Yes, beautifully yes. laid out for you to taste. Yes. This means you every aspect it. of this creation. You taste it. Yes, and it is being tasted. Yet, uh, the, the yet is the but. And yet <laughs> is the but. <laughs> the scraps are coming in in dynamic level, not here. This is also dynamic level. Maybe we are misunderstanding what we mean by dynamic level. When I am is, that is the dynamic aspect of me. So this presence is your true substitute. Whether you are here, there, wherever the room might be, whoever you are with, is there anything greater than your presence? We exchange it for a notion. And we discuss that. I am not saying, of course, the energetic presence of Satsang is very useful for us to see this truth. But even the energetic presence of satsang is not the discovery that you are making about yourself. That your being is greater than that. Now you say you've been coming here for three years. Now in three years, you must now be able to see that whenever. I exchanged the truth for a false idea about myself. I get slapped in life. See, no. Whenever I exchange the truth for a false notion about myself, life slaps me about. Isn't it true? <laughs> That is what happens. That is what happens as you. Are coming to this recognition more and more and more that the sensitivity towards the false will also keep increasing, and you will find that that which used to be a comfortable position for you to take as a person now becomes very shaky, very uncomfortable. Should we really do this exercise? Because this question has come many times. You have to step out for a minute. And tell me if I'm not there. Did you do it? Where am I now? Here. So at which, what? Like Guruji asks, at what distance will I leave you? I've asked you this before. It's not there. Was not there. 
what's not there? Yeah, so this is the confusion. Isn't it? If attention is moving, now attention is constant. Yes, but attention is also going to this body in front of you. Attention is also going to the ear. Attention is moving. So what has an each there, yeah. So attention is going to that also. Nothing can exist without your attention. Attention is moving here very naturally. You will be Yeah. This one, you see. This one that has an idea of what it should be. Who is that one? Who should not get angry? Who should not get angry? Energy is not good. <laughs> Who is tasting the energy which is not good? You say that I am getting caught up in the phenomenal play and getting lost. That is why I tell you to keep your eyes on me. If you keep your eyes on me, how will you get lost? Possible? When does it go away? When does the devotion go away? Don't know anything at all about anything. Don't even know that. Because I'm not giving you a position, a new position. You say, it is my problem. So I want all your knowledge, everything that you know. I want all your stories, everything that you have experienced. Some Even this, don't know. You see, because 
in this seeming report about the past, you are making a projection about the future. That means you don't trust me. Okay, okay. Now I am immersed in the now. Show me this I. No, no. It's just a conversation. Uh, <laughs> is it? Is it? Is it? Sounds like a problem because you say it is just conversational, but you were going to say here I am immersed in the heart, but when I go out, it is not this. Now this I is it fictional or is it real? What is your relationship with this play? Then why you want the play to change? The witness buys it. Then. Somehow, it's sounding a bit out all over the place today. So this maybe has become knowledge. Is it? When it become knowledge. Am I speaking of knowledge? Yeah, because I feel like I feel like just this what is there, the the innocence of just speaking from what is is being replaced with wanting to use some concept to interact. If you truly see that you are the witness of this entire play, then what is left? And remember not to make even this not knowing anything of position. Can seem a bit uncomfortable to start with because you can only understand the opposites of these positions. I know something, I don't know anything. When I say neither, then either I am doing or father is doing. Neither. Neither know something nor know nothing. Just remain empty of any notion about yourself. This is the gift I want to give you. Or whether you should experience bliss, 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 joy, joy, joy after this, or anger, 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 lust, lust, lust. Do you know? If you don't know, you cannot know. What is that? What is that?
experience. This is becoming one. What has happened to Kupala? All notions that we might have about it should be like this. Can we talk? So this is one attractive notion for many, especially those who have been in satsang for some time, have some spiritual experience. Then you can pick up the idea that it must always be like that. Then I will be free. But this I is still the false one. Then the mind will come and say, But what have you been doing here for three years? If I haven't even understood this. Forget about that one who has been here for three years. What are you now? Huh? Yes. Emptiness is the true position, but without it being a position. You know what I mean? If emptiness also becomes a position, then like uh, Nada one time, Nada she came, she came and said, I'm just trying to be open Nada, N-A-D-A, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing the name properly. She came to Satsang with a beautiful report. She said, I heard you talk about openness. And since then I've just been trying to be open. And initially it was a relief. But now I see that this openness itself is causing a lot of trouble, you see? Because openness also is not a position. To be truly open means neither free nor bound, neither enlightened nor suffering, not applicable. Have you got it? Not applicable. Have you not got it? Not it does not apply to the truth of who you are. This is what I'm showing you. Otherwise, it's still the same guy, the same I, 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 I this or I that. Neither you are. Are we connected? End of story. No but. Say, but where are the fireworks? Am I enlightened? No, nothing. <laughs> no certificate of anything at all. That means I'm still bound. 
We're still talking about the blue candy. <laughs> Thing you can use as a position, especially those who have been with me for some time. It's game over. Game over. Anyone can have some time to settle into these these terminology of such and can seem new. When I say not applicable, it might not make sense. But I'm just taking my sword out for those who've been with me for a while. Hello? This is a sign of the sword coming now. You can turn the slide off. The UPS is complaining. Now we have been through the Ashtavakra many times, the first few chapters three times, the full Ashtavakra once. <laughs> We're not going to play this game. Chop, chop, chop. <laughs> Thank you all so much for being in satsang today. Sadhguru Shri Muji Ji Ki Jai. Jai. Sadhguru Shri Ananta Ji Ki Jai. Today you are talking about the... You have to speak louder. Yesterday you were talking about... And I was doing uh, uh, that for my watching the game. And, uh, and I noticed that I'm not enjoying the game because I really enjoy the game. Uh, you see how the guy is born yeah. and how he swings the ball. Yeah. You know, 
No, you really enjoy yes. because you know I, I know the cricket. I hate it. Yeah. And uh, it's, not, it's not happening now. Uh, I'm not enjoying the game because I have taken a position in India must win. Yes. And uh, uh, the, the, uh, this guy bats so well, he's hit. Right? Yes. So, uh, this is also true to life, isn't it? Because you took a position that it should Exactly. Back. Exactly, that's why I shared the story here. Yeah, so it was... Uh, Every time we take a position, it is an invitation for suffering. It's such a good, uh, such a, such a good, uh, um, you know, we are, this is what's coming in. Position uh, means all this. Because position means, I am only this, I am not that. What is a position? Is there something like an unlimited position? Even if you say unlimited position. <laughs> <laughs> it is defining a limit. Position means I'm this side of the debate or that side of the debate. This is my stance. This is my mask. This is my pretense. Empty of position. Just what is is. It is impossible to resist. The ego is just a resistance to what is.